All right, guys, we are back with some more reviews. I am joined uh, by my fellow Pro Feedback uh, reviewers here. So if you guys are not familiar with them, you will get to know them through these videos, through these reviews that we do on YouTube. Uh, this first uh, track is from Tizar Roberts. He's one of our Pro Feedback members. This is an orchestral track. And um, I took a little preview of it. It's a really cool, dynamic, interesting track. But hopefully we can give some notes for Tizar to help him improve it and actually make it even more licensable than it is. And again, the point of these reviews for all of you guys watching on YouTube is to hopefully learn alongside what we're doing here. And even though this isn't your particular track that we are reviewing, there are a lot of common sort of golden rules and, and things that you'll find in common with a lot of different types of tracks that can be applicable for many different genres. So you should always be kind of keeping an ear out for what is it about this track that's working or not working and try to take these lessons and apply it to your music. And of course, you can always join Pro Feedback and get feedback like this yourself if you'd like to do that. And the links are always below in the description box. So let's go ahead and get started with Tzar's track here. And uh, let's see if we can get some help full um, notes for him. Here we go. These are getting our blood pumping early in the morning. Uh, this is really cool. This is actually really interesting. I was just watching the new uh, Batman movie, and I was actually getting a lot of visuals from that movie from this cue. So I don't know if maybe you'd watch that movie recently as well, but there's definitely a lot pulling out of this really dark, tense, kind of superhero vibe coming on here. So definitely a lot of great uh, emotion and energy um, and just... Um, focus like I definitely feel the focus of this track so well done in terms of just making sure that you are promising a certain emotion and you are delivering that emotion the entire time um, so that's that's sort of the positives I, I hear there's definitely some things I think can make this actually much stronger um, but before I jump into those let's go ahead and get into some of our pros opinions here uh, Hans I know that orchestral music is something you've done a lot of um, what are your initial thoughts on this one well, uh, first, you know, uh, Tizar, thanks for sharing this song with us. Uh, it's it's great. I really, really like it. It uh, has a wonderful, wonderful beginning. And uh, it certainly holds the emotion. I felt the same. It holds the emotion uh, uh, throughout the song. Um, 
one point that I, I would consider is uh, personally for me, uh, there are too many stops in the, in the track. So there's too many times where it goes almost to complete zero and then you start again. Uh, I would probably get rid of at least a couple of those and would try to, uh, um, you know, to combine it in a way. Uh, and then I think at the, you know, at the last, uh, like the last third, when you, when you start again with these uh, uh, half notes, you know, hits and, and chord progression that goes in half notes, um, there I wish, because it's similar than the beginning, and I kind of wish there you would have kind of a, think about a 16th note uh, um, uh, viola figure that goes through that kind of drives it towards the end a little more. I feel that the end falls flat for me. Uh, you have, it's, it's great in the middle. It's, it's wonderful energy. And then all of a sudden the end kind of uh, peters out a little bit for me. So I kind of feel there could be a, a, just a tad more excitement if you had like a 16th, you know, it, it could be violence, could be, uh, um, could be violas, uh, staccato, really strong, uh, going through these uh, half note uh, things. And I think that the very ending, I, I think you could do really better on the, on the very end. Um, I think I don't like that, that uh, low boom uh, by itself at the end. I'd, I'd rather have something that, is, that, is, that really works towards the end and then comes with one, one hit and that's, that's the end. And then you have to, um, you know, the, you have a ring out there. Um, I think I'm not sure how far you went with the uh, with your compression. Um, it feels a little bit to me like it's on the verge of of breaking up of a little too much. I guess it's probably like in the range of minus eight uh, LUFS. It's very loud, and I think uh, um, you could probably ease off a little bit. It's it's not a big thing, but I I personally I'd like to hear just a little less of of that and have even more dynamic. Otherwise, uh, you did really well in your dynamics and uh, um, the overall sound. I think uh, uh, the, you know, all the drums and everything sounds really big. The whole thing sounds very big, which is perfect for this kind of cue. So I think you are really, really close uh, of having something uh, wonderful and really licensable. Thanks awesome, again. Hans. Thank you. And if you see our, nod, our heads uh, nodding while the pros are giving their thoughts, it's because we're agreeing with them, essentially. So I pretty much agree with all of that that Hans said. So we're not going to try to repeat ourselves over and over again. Um, Yele, uh, I know you also done a lot of orchestral work yourself with a lot of strings and that kind of thing. Uh, what were your takes on this? Maybe something that Hans uh, didn't cover there. Uh, well, first of all, I immediately got this uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness kind of vibes. The trailer's all over the place right now, and I really got the feeling I was being dragged. So really well done on that part. I think it could be that it's the Zoom connection, but I think the reverb could be dialed a bit down. Everything's now being soaked up in the entire... Uh, I mean, basically, it's a pool of reverb. Uh, if you dial it a bit down and like the compression, uh, dial it a bit down as well. I think you already have a very solid track uh, that is indeed licensable. And uh, like Hans said with the ending, um, one big hit. I think if you would add, add a, a bigger uh, drum in the higher dynamics or the higher frequencies like you have in the, uh, in the ending. And also a big low brass bram, for example, at the end. That would all may already fix uh, the ending, in my opinion. Uh, but for the rest, a really, really well done job. Really solid. So, great job. Awesome, man. And Scott, how about you, man? Anything we haven't covered yet? Um, I think we've covered most of it. I think uh, along the same lines as Hans, I was looking at the track, like, how could we edit it? Like, how could you take a component from the middle and add it to the to the ending and you know the tail and and how do you make a sting out of it so i think hans really nailed it when he said that ending needs something else i think that would be my biggest focal point or takeaways to make sure that there's something sustainable at the very end that if you had to take something from the middle of the track or the very beginning you're definitely gonna need something at the end of it so to have something sustainable at the end i think is would probably be the biggest most important piece for me awesome man and philip how about anything else um, yeah, I thought it was really cool. I thought the the intro, as everyone has said, you know, really set the tone. Right when it came in, I, I kind of felt like the low end was overpowering and the the melody was kind of struggling to 
to be the focal point. And I don't know if that's a reverb on the on the low instruments or just um, it could be dialed back slightly uh, volume wise. And um, you know, as far as the stops and starts, I agree with Hans and and thought that a a suggestion that I would make would be this super cool second part with the fast strings and and the movement going on. If take a figure from there and just start creeping it in halfway through that A part where it's just, you know, by the time we get there, the brain has already heard that. So when it comes in, it's much more natural. And it's just like, ah, oh, there's the release that we've been looking for, you know, and then maybe that could be revisited on the outro to give it that energy and just, you know, take it home to the big ending. Excellent. Yeah, I like that suggestion. Uh, a couple of my final thoughts. Um, one is, you know, I really like these big, epic, bram, you know, these kind of build up sections that have the little pauses. I do like the energy. However, I'm, I wasn't feeling like they were releasing enough. Like, I feel like the energy needed to be up at like a nine or a 10, and they were kind of stuck at a six or a seven. So I don't know if that's how you are articulating your horns or these big blasts you were doing, particularly in the beginning, you know, sort of this uh, middle section here in the middle, um, or I guess middle third, uh, beginning middle third. And then definitely at the very end, you have these big bram, and then they pause and go away. I really feel like we need to add a lot more energy to those. So maybe messing with uh, the articulations, it could be some modulation, it could be some automation. So whatever you need to do, just add a little bit more energy to those because I felt like I I could hear where they wanted to go in intensity wise, but they just weren't delivering it for me. So I just felt like they were sort of these big epic hits that didn't have their cup of coffee. They were just kind of a little bit you know, sluggish essentially. And then there were a couple of, as the drummer, I always noticed drumming things. There were a couple of you know, these big kind of do, 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 do. You kind of tried to do some, maybe some triplet hits, but they didn't feel like they actually worked um, rhythmically. They kind of felt like they were stuttering and they were uneven. So it would be like do, 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 do. So it didn't feel like it was a stable, steady beat, even though I like what you were doing with it. You were trying to sort of break up the kind of 4-4 four, four feeling. Um, maybe not the 4-4 four, four feeling, but just the sort of sta stable, slower feeling. You were trying to add a little bit more tension to that with this different type of rhythm. I think it was a really good idea, but just double check your quantizing on that because I felt like some of those, a few of those, especially in the beginning, I feel like they, they weren't quite uh, hitting there. Um, and definitely the same with what Han said, uh, especially in your middle section. I, I started to hear, I always call it the, the tube of toothpaste being squeezed. I can just hear the compression of the track really, really pretty intensely in the middle section of your track. And it got me to, it, what happens is you enjoy the track less because now you're hearing an artifact rather than the music, right? So now your brain is being distracted from a distortion essentially rather than just really being sucked into the music and being a pulled along for the ride so as he said this is plenty loud you can come down a bit back off of those settings and really just let your music breathe and develop naturally um you know one thing that for sure i think everybody watching this can take uh and i've given this note a lot i'm glad hans you brought that up was you know when we have these slower sections where it's just bomb half notes whole notes you know if we don't have shorter, more rhythmic something going on in between, it could be little strings, little percussion, it does start to slow down, weigh the track down. It starts to feel like we've lost our momentum. And that's certainly what I felt in the, in the last third of this track. We were going at like, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour, and then er, we, we slammed the brakes and we're basically just chugging along at the end. And the end really should be that part where we're like, hyping up to the biggest part of the track, right? So like there were suggestions like with, with Philip, just having some small little um, staccato string 16th notes, little build them up, add some uh, octaves on top of them, add another harmony to them, add more elements to that, whatever. So use some quicker paced um, or shorter um, duration notes. You'll actually, it's like the, 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 the fastest cheat to create more energy in your track. So especially if you have kind of a mid-tempo track, which this is, That'll be how you're going to add energy to it if it feels like it's it's lacking a little bit there. So um, overall, Tzar, you are on your way to making something really licensable, especially as like a trailer track. But for sure, yeah, that ending, I agree. That ending needs to be hyped up a lot more. It felt like sort of like we were just kind of hitting the same note four times in a row, but it wasn't it wasn't growing or developing or building. It just felt like it just, yeah, we have our final ending, but eh not really memorable, not really building up to the point where it possibly could have. So I think your skills are all there. You have all the skill sets to do it. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning it and adding a little bit more um, of those natural dynamics to your track. I think that's really what you got to go with this. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this teaser and I hope everybody that watched this enjoyed it. Thank you to all your pros, to all the pros that helped us uh, do this and to everybody that watched. I hope you guys found something valuable for your own music. And again, if you guys want to join us, the link is down below for uh, pro feedback. We hope to have you join our awesome, amazing community.